Chapter One Hundred and Five. Everyone's eyes were focused on Chung Myung. The fact that Chung Myung took the lead was something no one predicted. Anybody with some knowledge of martial arts, no, even a person with no understanding of martial arts, could tell that Chung Myung was the most exceptional among Mount Hua's third-class disciples. Usually, the strongest fighter would wait until the final moment to have a favorable chance at victory, especially in events like this. Where the winner continues until they lose. What the hell is he thinking? Does he want to fight against the Jungnam sect's disciples head on? Those who predicted some kind of trick out of Chung Myung were confused and struggled to comprehend his actions. Hyun Jung and Eun Gom were the same, as were Hwang Moon Yak and Yoon Jung. Sa Young, shouldn't we stop him now? I will take the lead. Then you know there's nothing we can do, right? When the third class disciples approached him and asked, Yoon Jung frowned. How can we stop him when he's the one throwing himself out there? Everyone's concerned gazes focused on Chung Myung's back, but Chung Myung simply kept his sights on the Jungnam sect. Do kids today know the legend of the strongest swordsman that single-handedly defeated a gang of people when he was just 15? Maybe the story was still told. Well, this person was from an era even before Chung Myung, but he had heard this story over and over again. It's said. That Buddha was just 18 when he gained insight. That was also a story that resonated throughout the world. Other than that, there were no other examples. The masters of those generations who made names for themselves since childhood must have also been told similar legends. Why? Because without such stories, there would be no conversation. The world they lived in praised the strong. In order to prove one's strength and display their skills. A worthy opponent must be overcome. No matter how strong Mount Hua becomes, no one would appreciate the change if they could not prove it. Whether they grew twice as strong or ten times, no one would ever know that change came to Mount Hua. Change must be seen with the eyes and experienced with the body. Every powerful person needed to recognize the change Mount Hua was undergoing. That was the quickest way to rebuild Mount Hua's reputation. And today, Chung Myung. Intended to create a legend that would spread the name of Mount Hua. There are two ways to make a name for a sect. One is to build achievements that no one can ignore, and the other is to prove the sect's strength. The strongest sect, that's good. The best swordsman in the world, that's good too. However, the best way is to have rising stars among the disciples. People treat others the most favorably when they have high expectations of them. The strongest sect may be seen as an enemy, while the strongest swordsman would be seen as competition. Rather than those options, having powerful disciples with potential that live up to the expectations of others is the most comfortable way. There is a reason that young geniuses are evaluated as rising dragons and tigers. This was an internal law of sects that had been passed down from generation to generation. Mount Hua's third-class disciples. Defeated the Jungnam sect's third-class disciples. That would be a fun story. The third-class disciples defeated Jungnam sect's second-class disciples. That's a remarkable event. But a single third-class disciple from Mount Hua swept through Jungnam sect's second-class disciples one after another. This news would turn the world upside down, and it would be a shame that the Jungnam sect would be unable to wash away for generations. Chung Myung smiled. Why did you have to touch Mount Hua? If you wanted to touch it, you should have done it when I wasn't alive. Well, shouldn't I collect some interest while I'm at it? As Chung Myung raised his sword, Yu Bek approached and stood across from him as he spoke. Your confidence is clearly second to none in this world, but I'll let you know that self-confidence without skill is a shortcut to a disgraceful defeat. Phew. Chung Myung just lifted his sword without answering. Normally, he would have said something back. But now he wasn't in the mood. Instead, he looked back at the third-class disciples of Mount Hua. Sa Young, concentrate on the match. Remember my words. Do not miss a thing. Huh? Perhaps this was a rare chance to see an interesting performance from a real match. Chung Myung looked at Yu Bek and said, "Mount Hua's third-class disciple Chung Myung asks for a match." Yu Bek, who was about to say something, flinched and then accepted. The Jungnam sect second-class disciple Yu Bek accepts Mount Hua's offer. The third-class disciples who were watching felt their bodies tense up. 
there's something different about him right now. This wasn't the usual Chongmyung that they knew. The usual Chongmyung would have provoked the enemy in front of him the moment he stood against him. However, his iconic playfulness was nowhere to be found. A frigid feeling came from his back that left them feeling cold. Like a swordsman heading into the battlefield. Yun Jung couldn't take his eyes off Chongmyung as if he was possessed. He felt that something extraordinary was about to happen. And at that moment, Chongmyung's sword moved slowly. The sword that began moving from above slowly descended until it was brought back to its original form. Yun Jung couldn't breathe as he saw this scene. The initial form. Chongmyung was now displaying the initial form of the equilibrium of six sword. The initial form was a greeting and courtesy to inform the opponent that he was ready to begin. But now, Yun Jung felt as if he was being sucked into that otherwise simple movement. It was an absolutely perfect sword, with perfect speed and perfect form. How could so much be shown with just that one movement? Yun Jung realized that this wasn't something that was being shown to the opponent. It was meant for Mount Hua's disciples. From now on, he would be using the equilibrium of six sword, so he was asking them to pay attention. Don't miss it! Yun Jung shouted unconsciously. Don't miss a single one of Chong Myung's moves. Never! Don't even blink! Just watch him! No one replied. They all just nodded. They were all trying their best to capture Chong Myung's movements. I'll fix that troublemaking head of yours. Perhaps Yu Baek couldn't understand how fearsome Chong Myung was. Or maybe it was because of his opponent's pressure. But Yu Baek burst into a scream as he rushed at Chong Myung. Chong Myung's eyes just looked at him coldly. Equilibrium of Six This sword technique was the basis of all Mount Hua's swordsmanship. Four cardinal directions brought together on earth, and beneath heaven combines into six. It represents everything within the world as well as unity. That was the essence of the simple and basic swordsmanship. Stab, cut, slash, block. Nothing more than basic swordsmanship. But in the end, every sword technique in the world begins with these movements. No sword can escape this rule. The opponent's sword danced gracefully in the sky. That! Hyun Jung's eyes went wide as he noticed something strange. That swordsmanship was reminiscent of a flower in full bloom. Doesn't it seem familiar to something he had heard about? Did the Jungnam sect have such sword arts? Aside from the beautiful appearance, the sharpness of the swordsmanship was apparent. Dozens of sword-like forms swept in for Chong Myung with bizarre petal-like movements. However, Chong Myung's eyes began to ice over and emit a deathly chill as he saw this technique. Chong Myung merely took a single step forward, aiming for the top. At the same time, he thrust his sword ahead. <coughs> the change that was forming in the air disappeared like a ghost. <coughs> How? Chong Myung's sword, which precisely struck and interrupted the flowing sword play, hit Yu Baek's wrist. Yu Baek retreated as he felt the heavy pain assail his senses. But it was an obvious mistake. Chong Myung took another step and swung his sword down. <coughs> Chong Myung's wooden sword, loaded with ki, collided with Yu Baek's simple sword and echoed loudly with a dull sound. Somehow, he had managed to raise his sword in time to block. However, the weight of Chong Myung's blow came crashing down upon his body. <coughs> Yu Baek eventually pushed the sword of Chong Myung away and stepped back. However, with a cold and expressionless face, Chong Myung stepped closer and swung his sword. There was no flashy movement. It wasn't some sharp sword or weighted move. It was a simple sword movement. Stab, cut, slash, block. Yet, the child's sword couldn't be blocked. If it was blocked, the blade would fly again. And if it was pushed away, it would strike the chin. Wha- What is this? Yubek blocked and blocked again. But each time Chong Myung's sword was blocked, he would be pushed back several steps. J- Just once! He only needed one opportunity. Then, by inserting his sword into that gap, he could display his sex swordsmanship. If he could unfold the Jungnam sex's newest sword art, then this cheeky bastard could be defeated. But... Uh! Unfortunately for him, Chong Myung's sword struck before he could fully display the technique earlier. His wrist seemed to have been broken as he screamed in agony. But with his pride on the line, he didn't withdraw. What? Once! 
just break through the child's sword once, but the sword of Chongmyung kept coming, and the cost of not receiving Chongmyung's sword properly was great. Chongmyung's sword fell at a slow pace. It wasn't quick, yet it destroyed Yubek's flow. W what the hell is this? Realizing that he was being driven into a corner, Yubek looked at Chongmyung's sword as if his soul had been drained from his body. Stab. Swing. Yet, he couldn't find a single gap between those movements. Perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Kang. In the end, Yubek was unable to keep up with the change in movement and his sword was deflected away. As his sword rose into the sky, Yubek stared at Chongmyung's sword as it cleanly slashed from his head. This must be a dream! Pang! Chongmyung's sword stopped right in front of his head. He didn't hit, but that was enough. Unable to handle the strike, Yubek stumbled back. S Saje! Sayong! That was the end. Staring at the Jongnam disciples that gathered, Chongmyung simply continued to gaze at them from afar. Those who received that look felt a chill run down their spine and took a step back. Chongmyung spoke with the softest voice. Next! That was the moment when the Jongnam sect disciples desperately realized that something was wrong.